Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. So in today's episode we are going to continue the development of this Rembrandt Master Study slash Master Copy. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the materials that we're going to be using today. Now this is a Winsor Newton fast drying titanium white. I know that it's kind of glary. It's a Griffin Alkid. Uh, you want to have some type of fast dryer or uh, some type of underpainting white color. You could opt out for lead white as well. That would, would probably be a little bit uh, more preferred. Uh, but in any case, what you want is a very fast drying either titanium white or lead white. And of course, good old raw umber, also from the Winsor and Newton brand. Any old palette knife that's a little bit uh, flexible. I've had this palette knife for about uh, 11 years now. And of course, some type of solvent. I will be using turpentine, uh, the more traditional uh, thinner, of course, uh, I could be using spike lavender as well or odorless mineral spirits, but I'm going to just be using uh, turpentine just for, you know, the sake of switching things up. And of course, the good old painting palette. So don't worry about all of the uh, colors that you're seeing up there. That's just colors that uh, dried there from a previous painting session. I prefer to use uh, wooden palettes in particular. This palette um, I, I named uh, pizza because on the back side there's a pizza cutter and a very strong magnet as you see my palette knife actually stays uh, it sticks right onto the uh, the magnet which is kind of interesting um, so what you want to do you have your fast drying titanium white and your raw umber also if you are using water mixable oil paints then you don't need the solvent you just have water so in, in the first uh, this is going to be the first uh, build-up layer, uh, impasto layer, though I think I'm only going to uh, do one impasto layer. I'll show you what I mean uh, about that a little bit later on. Um, so if you are in my online class, so if you are on the mentorship tier, <laughs> the magnet is going to make it a little bit weird to m mix on here. So I'm only going to mix a middle tone and then I'm going to just kind of work in between uh, the middle tone. So uh, those of you that are my online students and if you're interested in my online classes, please go to uh, patreon.com slash upari artist. Uh, look for the mentorship tier or the live stream tier. Um, this Rembrandt master study, along with the other master studies that we'll do, are extracurricular activities on top of the um, the lesson, the main lesson that we have each week. So remember, you can send me images, those of you in my online class, you can send me images uh, for this extracurricular activity with the Rembrandt. Now, I have a... Uh, I have the light, I have a middle tone, and then I have the raw umber, so let's get started. I'm trying my best to keep a consistent technique. Now, I've been painting for 11 years. Um, first, let me explain what I'm doing right now. So I'm using a synthetic brush. Uh, I have just one step down from the lightest light which is the titanium white so I used a little bit of, of the middle tone just to bring the value a step down and I'm going pretty thick uh, and to follow the Faberlein principle you want to uh, not use any medium uh, little to no medium just the thickest oil paint possible now getting back to what I was um, trying to explain uh, before uh, in the past, I have explored a lot with technique, and I have used this very same technique many years ago. Um, but after many, many, um, you know, much, much trial and error, I found that, at least for my personality, using a classical approach, um, like the one I'll be guiding you through, really uh, obtains the, at, at least in my opinion, uh, my favorite type of result. Uh, when you're painting, you really want to know the expectations in each step. When you know the expectations of each step, 
it is a much more relaxing process. Now, that being said, let me talk to you about this stage of the process. This is one of the most relaxing stages of the process because we're going to be flattening out the lights in particular and the aim is to build the surface. So we have already established the main shapes. Now there's some drawing things going on here. This might have to raise a little bit. Um, the shoulder might have to move but in general this is a pretty relaxed stage and I find that every stage is pretty much relaxed because you're building onto something that you have established in the previous layer. Kind of like when you're drawing on a toned paper. When you're drawing on toned paper and you know that feeling you get when you put in a little bit of uh, white pencil or white chalk and then all of a sudden the mid-tones and the, uh, the paper start to have this nice simplicity to it. That's what we want with every stage of the oil painting process. And I am, you know, putting a little bit of value uh, variation, but I'm keeping it to a minimal, letting the canvas, or not the canvas, the panel do as much work as it possibly can. And I just have this middle value here to help um, minimize the mixing time that it takes. Now it may look really bright by the end of uh, this this uh, sitting and this will be rather short I think in comparison to the first part, the umber layer, the drawing layer. I mean we're going to continue to draw but the purpose here is to establish this bright pattern. Not to render anything, just establish the light and then get into the impasto. Now, things are going to change quite drastically now. So as we get into the light, the value is just a step below the titanium white. And we're going to want to put in our lights a little strategically here. And with a Rembrandt, I highly suggest to keep things as simple as possible and step back as often as possible. See, those are the first real light masses in the uh, painting, the first three. So one, two, and three. The important thing to note is that it, it's going to be a little anxious to do this, to cover right over the light. Um, but what you want to do is you want to see in sequence. So in a way, learning to paint is learning to see in a different way. Um, and I recommend you do this, especially if you are a beginner. See, I dropped the value a little bit for the side there. Just a little drop in value, but not very much. Now, especially if you are a beginner, I highly suggest to latch on to this type of uh, beginning, this type of uh, approach where everything is mapped out and everything is relaxed because I'm speaking to you from experience. Um, and none of my teachers really gave me a method and said, here is the method. Stick with the method and learn each stage of the method in order to progress in your painting. Um, no one ever really told me that. My teaching in the past was more uh, fun, uh, fundamentals based, foundational uh, based, which is a good way to learn. But what we're going to have here is a process involved in producing uh, results. So where I want it to be a little darker, I'm putting in less pressure. Where I want it to be lighter, I'm putting in more pressure. And I'm not going to do any kind of subtle rendering for the face. In fact, my goal here is just to establish the main light mass and use the tone of the panel to uh, put in some little soft edges. And you're going to have to accept that the painting is not going to look like the Rembrandt for some time. 
what you're doing is you're anticipating what you will do on the next layer. So each layer um, exists to facilitate the future layers. Now traditionally you would use a lead white for this. I have lead white. I finally have um, purchased it again. Um, but I'm choosing to use the titanium white fast drying alkyd because what I'm trying to do is create a fast drying surface so I can go really heavy with the impasto. So what you're doing is setting the stage for the buildup of color is what you're doing. And you're also solving some compositional and drawing uh, problems. Because a lot can be done with just light and dark. And you know, if you've gone through or are going through uh, classical atelier training, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, for the longest time, you will spend uh, just looking at light and shade, light and shade in uh, Barg drawings, Barg copies, um, which is a good exercise. It, it helps you to see simple shapes of light and shadow that are mapped out for you in those drawing plates. But this really helps you kind of experience uh, the entire development of a painting and why each stage is so important to a, a painting. Now, I'm going to take a step back and if you're painting along with me, so if you are watching this and doing the same master study um, if you're in the online class, remember you can send me images Saturday night by 11.59 for the teacher-student feedback video, which comes out every week, um, or every Monday. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hold back from the tendency of uh, trying to render it's so easy to to fall into this mindset wh where I have all these values, I might as well start making the thing look realistic. So I'm kind of fighting the tendency to want to do that and just putting in the main lights. Alright, so now uh, the magic is going to start to happen with the uh, the impasto. So I'm going to get a lot of titanium white, fast matte titanium white. I know, by the way, if you are interested in purchasing the same type of materials that I'm using, uh, feel free to check out the description box down below. I'll have links to everything that I'm using. I think I even found this, found pizza. What I named this palette, I named it pizza, I think I already explained why. But I even found this, this little palette. So there will be links to all of that. So now we've got a really loaded brush. You could also do this with a uh, hog bristle brush. I do have a bristle brush on hand somewhere. Uh, a massive bristle brush. I can use this to take all of this now. And just cake onto here. And so the way that I like to do impasto, uh, now that I put that in there, I have to put some more paint out. And the, the way that I like to do this, you know, different people do this uh, different ways. After establishing all of that paint, um, I'm not done establishing the impasto, but after I have it all established, I will get a soft brush and just kind of start to mold the paint. And it's okay to go really bright. So see how I'm just a step below. 
the lightest light. Do we see this in the Rembrandt? Not really. Did Rembrandt do this? Most likely. He most likely would have done something like this. And the thing about Impasto is that it is a layer, it's, it's thick paint, um, which helps create more of an illusion of uh, something existing in three-dimensional space. Um, it's a little easier to paint thick if you are using just grisaille. So grisaille meaning a light and dark underpainting. Whereas if you try to build impasto with color, uh, there will be some complications um, of what mixture did I use to do this? What mixture did I do to you to get that? I'm not saying you can't paint thick with color. I'm just saying it, from experience it's a little bit easier to do things like this um, with grisaille, so with um, monochromatic. And if you're using uh, water mixable, so if you're using something like the Cobra or the Holbein, Hol Cobra is definitely my favorite with the water mixable, I would highly suggest getting this um, Alkid. Even though, even though this is not a water mixable, you can mix a little bit and it's still water cleanable. And it does expedite the drying process. But that's completely up to you. Right now I'm just caking on the paint. This is kind of fun. Um, think about this as the continuation of building the ground of the painting. So now that I have all of this heavy, heavy impasto established, I'm now going to get a clean synthetic and start to sculpt. I'll get you a little close-up shot now. And now that you're in close-up, you can see how thick the paint is. And I will manipulate the brush strokes to follow the form. So turning in this direction. Now what you don't necessarily want, um, and it's something that can happen with this type of application of paint, is overly sharp edges. So once I'm done uh, customizing the uh, particular pattern that I want the impasto to be, then I will go in with another clean and dry synthetic brush and I will go in and make these edges soft. So you want the texture of the paint to be, you want it to be as, as um, methodical. Because you only get one chance here with the impasto. Once this dries, it's you can sand it if you want to take a, the uh, color off, but that's just going to be a huge inconvenience. This part for the for the main part, this is kind of subjective. How you want the paint to to flow, where you want it to be thick, where you want it to be thin, and I'm making it thicker for the areas that are sticking out the most. So I'm about to add a little bit more. See, for something like that, you definitely want the bristle. Do not use any medium. The Winsor Newton, from my, from what I'm noticing, Winsor Newton and Gamblin are very oily. Typically, when you build oil paintings, you want to follow the fat over lean, so meaning you want less medium in the early stages and increase the amount of medium you use as you go. Some schools even have a fat medium and a lean medium. They have it so organized um, that 
you know, you just switch one medium with the other. And um, I, I have been doing that as well. I'm introducing that to my online students. It's a mixture of solvent and uh, medium. I also have options for them for water mixable. In fact, last week's lesson was on glazing, which also included water mixable. Now I'm going in and pushing some of these edges back. So now there's really a texture uh, going on f from here, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thick, thin, thick, not as thick, but still of course thicker than the shadows. And now I'm just going to make some soft edges. So you can do this a number of times where you're constantly building up the impasto. I may do this a second time, I may not. Now don't confuse this with form modeling. We're not trying to model any form. We can put some little traces of light, say for the ear. But not really much. No detail needed. No eyelashes, irises, anything like that. You could put that in if you want, but just make sure to see the whole picture. Now typically uh, the difference between a fast dryer, a fast drying oil paint and just a regular oil paint is um, the difference is this will dry, this will be touch dry in maybe two to three days painting this thick and ready to continue to build whereas with you know using just titanium white or lead white without the fast drying alkyd, it's the alkyd that makes it dry faster it may take about a week to be as dry. Lead white, in my opinion, does dry a little faster. I use Williamsburg brand, but we'll get into that in another episode. You don't want any details. Especially nothing, nothing really in the shadow. What I'm going to do is now start to cover in some of the dark for the background. There is a little bit of turpentine on the brush. Again, you could use Gamsol or you can use any other type of mineral spirits. Um, you can use Spike Lavender, which is considered to be a, a, a healthier or less toxic alternative. I just, I, I enjoy how much more the distilled turpentine thins the paint. It thins it much faster, in my opinion, uh, than OMS, than using odorless mineral spirits. Now this will fade, uh, this will fade away. Not entirely, but it, it will fade. And that's okay. This is just to help to build the ground even more. And you can kind of use this to draw negative shapes. But you you wanna you want to change mindset a little bit from layer to layer. So the objectives of one layer, see what I'm doing right now is actually moving this. 
but I'm moving the little booklet or the scrolls with the negative shape rather than going in and trying to outline it. I'm just going in with one big mass to move this up. So each time you're focusing on something different and it will help to build the overall unity of the painting. Let's now switch into a darker middle tone. I'm actually going to do a little cut scene now. I'm going to just film the, or I'm going to paint in the rest. This is going to be darker relative to this. Um, this is going to be lighter relative to this and of course it's not going to be as light as anything here. And we're back. So now that you you see we have this dark mass, this one, and now we're starting to gauge uh, these values. So what you want to do at this point is um, you know don't lose don't lose hope. Uh, don't start to attach too much uh, to the uh, way the painting looks at this stage. You have to learn how to trust yourself, trust the uh, the approach that you're using. And that patience takes a lot of time. I think that's probably one of the reasons why I jumped around between so many different um, techniques um, before sticking with, with this one that I'm showing you now. Uh, it's just that I'm, I was so impatient and um, kind of an explorer. It was fun to explore so many different methods. But now after exploring so many different methods, um, you know, this is the one that's, that just makes the most sense to me. Uh, what you want to do is answer the biggest questions that you possibly can uh, in terms of large masses. That is a universal principle, uh, the principle of just simplification. Right now I have to step back. And then after stepping back I see that this can move. Whether you're painting in alla prima or you're painting in classical, I usually say that all techniques meet somewhere in the middle, and that is the middle stages. Um, and that's that's what will happen. So if you're working in direct, if you want to work more in uh, direct color, it can be more complicated, and it is more complicated for most of us, especially for me. Uh, whereas right now, you're really just answering questions of shape and at the same time you're setting up for the next day's work rather than trying to answer everything all at once. The plan is to do this with um, as many master studies or master copies as I can. As a result this will be longer, this process will take much longer. Uh, but I find that the uh, increase in the quality of an oil painting that the, the quality that you can get with this type of approach is worth the weight. You know, rather than I tell myself rather than uh, you know a hundred decent a hundred decent um all right looking alla prima paintings, what if I combined all of those hours into one classical painting that embodies the same principles as alla prima painting but has more volume, more depth. At this stage in my life, dedicate more time into higher quality paintings. And I feel that that is achievable through this process simply because it's so predictable from one stage to the next and it it does present many challenges that you would have also with Alla Prima but it gives you a way to problem solve that you learn from one stage to the next so you know, I may have had a problem in the uh, impasto, the light and dark stage in my previous painting, and I realized, oh, well, maybe what I had to do was go in with a, with a thin brush 
you know, maybe like in the middle of the night or something, I'm just thinking about what went wrong with my other painting. And then I just would come up with, have an epiphany for a particular stage of the painting. So I can improve my ability in each stage, which adds up to a much more coherent uh, and learned approach. Hopefully that makes sense. The better you can understand each stage of the process and how each stage of the process uh, will impact the final result, the stronger your artwork will be. In the past, I didn't use fast dryers. I didn't use alkids. I would just go in and, uh, you know, I would uh, just paint really thick and then try and put my painting in, in front of a heat lamp overnight and hope that it dries just using liquid, which um, you can use an alkyd medium. You can use a liquid, but these, uh, the alkyd oil paints, if you've never tried them before, they dry much faster than just using liquid or any other type of alkyd medium. Now I'm going to thin the paint out a little more with the good old turpentine. Now clearly there's a drawing discrepancy here. I'm aware of it. So what I'm going to do is just unify all of this. So what I usually say when in doubt, blur it out. So that's what I'm going to do. So the goal right now is just to cover all the way up until the little scroll, the scroll here, and maybe put a little tone here and there, but that will be about it. And um, what I do with my studio practice is I work on multiple paintings a day. So one painting may be on the uh, rendering stage, the building of color stage, the other painting may be in the very beginning. And it's a lot of fun to have that kind of working method. So now I'm going to just put something a little darker. And I will leave the tone underneath just to kind of help with the values. Now we'll switch to another clean and dry. Or how about this? I'll just use the paper towel. Just kind of scatter the paint a little bit. And then we'll draw in a little glimpse of impasto. So what I'll do is with the palette knife, I know that it's, it's going to be magnetic and stay there, but uh, I guess I'll mix down here. with the palette knife. Though I don't think that uh, Rembrandt painted that thick in this area. But we're just going to cake on the, the color. It's for fun. And then we'll get the clean and dry synthetic and just adjust the brush strokes to however we want them to appear. And you can go a little bit lighter uh, with this stage, and that's okay. It's always easier to layer darker. So if your initial layers are lighter, that's fine. It, it, that makes it easier to glaze and stuff, which we'll get into. Not in as much detail as in my online classes, but we'll get into it. Now remember, in the online classes, you have the option of sending me images every Saturday night, 11.59 p.m. There is a lesson, a main lesson, which is a project that 
these students are guided through from start to finish. Uh, we go, it's a results based uh, structure. So I guide students through the entire process of each project. But there's also extracurricular activities. This being one of the optional extracurricular activities that they can send images for feedback. I have a virtual classroom. Uh, so the feedback videos that I release for my students on Mondays is the virtual classroom. Now I'm going to take a step back and after taking a step back I realized I have answered all of the questions that I wanted to answer with this stage uh, the impasto stage. Um, this stage I, I pretty much just call the um, the poster image. This is what I called it uh, with my uh, online class. The poster image just is to emphasize the drama between light and dark. Uh, the next thing I'll do is just a little adjustment to the edge. Again, clean and dry synthetic. The painting is not yet ready for any sharp edges. So what you want to do is dry clean your synthetic brush. So I'm just using paper towel. You don't want any solvent on this brush. And luckily the paint is already starting to tack up, which is good. And if you've never used a fast dryer, um, an alkyd oil paint, I would definitely give it a try as an underpainting white or an impasto white. So um, I'm going to do that, what you just saw me do, um, but all throughout the light shapes, making sure that nothing dries uh, with too sharp of an edge. Alrighty, so I've gone in and softened as many of the edges as I could possibly identify. Again, just like I'm doing right now, going in with a clean and dry synthetic brush and just running the brush through the edge to ensure that I don't have too many sharp edges that dry. Remember though that this will fade as the uh, the ground will absorb some of the uh, the oil from the oil paint. Um, so just know that it will fade a little bit, some of the darks, but that, that's, that's okay. Now remember, if you would like to um, take online classes with me for just $10 a month, go to patreon.com slash artist. You can also go to the description box down below of this video. My online classes uh, guide students through projects each week on a Monday, they receive a new lesson guiding them through a project, portrait painting project, and they also have a John Singer Sargent extracurricular activity, which is a painting they can also send for uh, feedback videos. And now this Rembrandt painting over here, I don't know why I did the thumbs up, but in any case, this Rembrandt, they also have the opportunity to send me images as this painting um, develops. They are also being guided through this. I also offer the virtual classroom which is in the format of another video that they have that they receive on Monday as well. And in the virtual classroom uh, we go over the student artwork. Uh, we have a very awesome student body that is developing now. Uh, so a body of students uh, of which we get to see each other's artwork in the virtual classroom. And in the virtual classroom, I uh, use an app. I draw onto the image and I give constructive feedback, just like you would in a physical class, but in a virtual classroom. That being said, if you would like to watch more painting videos such as this one, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next one. And it is now time for our new patron shout-out. 
So thank you. Thank you so much, Tetsuya Tishachi. And thank you, thank you so much, Karen Olmsted. And thank you, thank you, Art Biski. And thank you, thank you so much, Roger McDonald. I'd like to thank you all so much for your support on my Patreon. Remember to check out this week's Behind the Scenes episode, as well as uh, taking the online lessons. Remember, you can take the online lessons at your own pace. Feel free to contact me if you need any extra information to the online lessons and the extracurricular activities. Thanks again for all of your support, and I'll see you on the next episode.